Hi, welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion about the cathode ray oscilloscope. Last time, we described the basic component, the basic function, how to draw a signal on the screen of this uh, device, the cathode ray oscilloscope. In this lecture, now we will uh, describe another matter in this uh, oscilloscope, which is the function of the grid and the focusing, either the electric focusing or the magnetic focusing. In this lecture, we will describe the function of the grid and how to make electric focusing. In the next lecture, we will describe or demonstrate the magnetic focusing. Let's start by the grid. The function of the grid is simply to control the intensity uh, of, the, of the drawing on the screen of the oscilloscope. What is the definition of the intensity? It is just the number of electrons hit the screen per centimeter squared. For example, for the same area here, let's assume some area on the screen. In this area, there are uh, a large number of electrons hit the screen at this, in this area. And in this area, there is less number of electrons hitting the screen. So we can say that the intensity here is higher than the intensity in this region or area. So for the same area, we have here higher number of electrons than this area. So the intensity here is larger than the intensity here. So we can conclude that there are more illumination in this area than this area. I mean, the drawing is much more clear because the number of electrons hitting the screen is much larger than this case. How we could make this, how we could control the number of electrons hitting the screen using the grid? Simply by attaching this grid to some variable resistor that attach it to negative potential and the positive potential. So, the cathode will emit some electrons. If the grid has much more negative voltage, so some of this electron will not continue its journey through the cathode ray oscilloscope, the rest of the component. So this grid can decrease the number of electrons that pass through it. It is a grid, it's a metal grid, has many holes. So uh, if, if the voltage of the grid is more negative than the cathode, some of these electrons cannot make its journey, cannot pass the grid to the cathode ray oscilloscope. On the opposite, if we increase the voltage of the grid, we can attract more and more electrons toward the cathode ray oscilloscope component and hit the screen. So, in conclusion, if we decrease the voltage of the grid, we can decrease the number of electrons hitting the screen. If we increase the voltage of the grid, we can attract more electrons from the, from the cathode. So, more electrons will pass through the cathode ray oscilloscope and more electrons will hit the screen. So, in this case, a positive voltage or higher voltage on the grid, more electrons, more intensity, more illumination. Lower voltage, less electrons hit the screen, less intensity, less illumination. Okay. Let's now see another function, another control that we can make, which is the focusing. Here we control the intensity, the illumination. Here we control the focusing. First, what is the definition of focusing? If we look at this simple picture, we have here two points on the screen. Let's assume this is a point and this is another point. For the same number of electrons hitting the screen, we can make some point like this, or a larger point like this. <coughs> here, we have here, for example, 100 electron, and we have here the same number of electrons, 100, for example. So what is the difference between this and this? This is more concentrated or more focused than this point. So by making more focusing, or by making focusing to the electronics, electronic beams, traveling through the 
concentric oscilloscope, we can focus more or decrease the area that, uh, in, by which they are hitting the screen. So we are focusing the, uh, the, the, the electron, electronics, electron beams on the screen. Okay? So, for the same number of electrons, we can decrease the area at which they will hit the screen or will increase it, uh, increase the area at which they will hit the screen. In the first case, we increase the focusing. In the second case, we decrease the focusing. Okay? So, how we can make this? We can make this focusing using two uh, basic methods. Electric focusing and magnetic focusing. We will describe in this, in this lecture the electric focusing, leaving the magnetic focusing for the next lecture. From its name, electric focusing, we rely on an electric field, a potential, okay? Or we can say electronic lenses. We will have some device. This device will act the same as glass lenses that concentrate or focus the light beams. Light beams, for example, comes like this. When they pass through some lens, they will concentrate the tower at some point or become closer to each other. This is what will the electronic lenses will do. What is the electronic lens? Simply. Simplest electronic lenses. We have two plates with the same potential and another two plates with the same also potential but there is a potential of these plates is higher than the potential of these plates. So we can say the potential here with the voltage here is more positive than the voltage here. It's not conditioned to make, to make this voltage negative, like I'm drawing here. For example, this can be 5 volt, 5 volt, 3 volt, 3 volt. Yes. At this, at this case, we can say this is more, more positive than this uh, two plates, the voltage in those two plates. Okay. What will happen if we have a metal plate here, have a voltage higher than a voltage on, a, on another metal plate? And there is some distance in between. What will happen is that there will be an electric field, lines, originating from the positive plate to the negative plate. Something like this. These beams, these rays, all of these are electric field rays, lines. And the same, of course, will be uh, for the lower or bottom plates. Also, we'll have ele electric rays or beams originating from the positive potential or positive voltage plate to the negative voltage plate. Okay. We can draw some imaginary surface called the equipotential surface passing through these, uh, these electric field lines and perpendicular to it. So we can draw someone like this, another one we can draw also, some, something like this. And the same for the, set, for, for the next half. And in, just in between, in the middle of these two plates, in the middle region, the equipotential surface will be just vertical like this. So, of course, this equipotential surface, if we look from this direction, we will see a surface. It's called, of course, it's imaginary one. If we look from this direction, we'll see just a line, just a curve. What is the definition of this equipotential surface? It is a surface at which, at each point of the surface, the, the voltage is the same. So, for example, the voltage here is like here, similar to it in here, equal to here, equal to here. So, any, any point here has the same voltage. 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 And we have also a potential surface inside the plates. For example, we can draw something like this here. Just perpendicular to the plates, to the two plates. At any point here, the voltage is the same. Also. Okay. Let's go back to our region between the two plates. Let's draw one of these equipotential surfaces. For example, one like this. And this is the electric field line. 
we'll cross, we'll cross it like this. We'll take or we'll describe the simplest case, the most obvious case, at which the electric field line will, will be will intersect this equipotential surface at a point, and at this point, if we draw a tangent to this curve, this tangent will be directed in the negative x direction. This is the simplest case between all these cases here. So we pick one of these equipotential surfaces with an electric field line passing through it, intersecting it, and at the intersection point, if we draw a tangent to, to, to this curve, this curve line, the tangent will be in the negative x direction or in x direction, whatever. Okay. Let's now assume that there, that there is some electronic beam, a beam of electrons that were passes through these electronic lenses. These two, these, uh, these electronic lenses. And it's passing with some angle. Let's assume it's a theta one. So, and this electronic, uh, this electronic beam has some velocity V1. This V1 has, has two components, one in y direction and one in x direction. Let's assume it is v1y and v1x. So v1 is equal to square root of v1x squared plus v1y squared. Okay. Let's now discuss what will happen to this electronic beam when it passes through this equipotential surface. Does the velocity will increase, decrease, it change? Does it change at all? We don't know. Let's assume in general it will be changed. So v1 will be v2 and v1 in general is not equal to V2. In general, it can be equal. We don't know yet. Okay. What is the effect of this electric field on V1? This will, this is what will, uh, this is the thing that will answer our question: whether V1 will be changed or not. At the intersection point here, all the electric field is in negative x direction. As you see, it's parallel to V1x. So it will affect V1x. Actually, it will increase it. So the electric field line at this point will affect or increase the, the x component of, of V1. And since V1 component is perpendicular to this electric field, it will not be affected. So this electric field will make a force in collusion, make a force in opposite to it in x, x direction. This force will accelerate more the electron, the electronic beam. There are multi electrons here in x direction, so it will increase the x component of the electronic beam. So V1 will not change it. So V1y is equal to V2y. Of course, the drawing is not, is not to scale. We should, I should draw it uh, with a lens like V1y. So V2y is equal to V1y. But V2x is larger than V1x. So V1y is equal to V2y, but V2x is larger than V1x. So what happened to V1 and V2? V1 is V1 squared plus V1, V1y squared plus V1x squared under the square root. V2 is the square root of V2x squared plus V2y squared. But V2x squared is larger than V1 squared, and V1 is like similar or equal to V2. So V2 is larger than V1. So this equipotential surface, this electric field increases the velocity of this electronic beam. So V2 is larger than V1. What is the effect of increasing V2 on the angle? Theta 1 and theta 2. What we want to do here is that we have a beam and we want this beam to be more focused, to become more closer to the x-axis. So we want to decrease theta 1. We want to make theta 2 less than theta 1. So now we increase theta 2, v2. What is the effect of increasing v2 on theta 2? Let's see. Sine theta 1 is equal to v1y over v1. And sine theta 2 is equal to v2y 
over V2 divided by V2. But V2 is larger than V1, and V2y is equal to V1y. So this value is less than this value. So sine theta 2 is less than sine theta 1. So we can say that theta 1 is larger than theta 2. So we could succeed that we're making the electron to become more close to the x direction. Or we can say to decrease its deviation. So we can expect at the screen the rays will be become closer to each other. And of course, if we have another beam here, for example, another beam. This beam also will be will become more closer to the x-axis. So this beam and this beam were more deviated from each other. After crossing the equipotential surface, they will become closer to each other. So we can expect instead of has having a big point like this, like this we will have a smaller point like this. What what what, what I'm drawing in this case. So, using electric field or the electronic lenses, what we can say, what we can call electronic lenses, we could decrease the deviation of the electronic beams, or we can say we can make them closer to each other. So, when they hit the screen, they hit the screen in, the, in a smaller area. So, we, we make them more focused, more concentrated. In the next lecture, we'll describe another technique, which is the magnetic focusing.